An exploring style adventure game needs to have somewhere for the player to go exploring. In other words, it needs locations or rooms. And rooms have to be joined together, so that means that you need a map. And that's what this lesson is all about. First, I need to define a room class. And to do that, I have to decide exactly what a room is. So let's draw it out. Here I have four rooms, that's a troll room, a forest, a cave and a dungeon. Each room has a name and it has connections in any of the four directions, north, south, east or west. And when there's no connection to another room, I'll just call that no exit. So that's what my room class needs. It needs a name, which is a string, and four variables for the directions, which I'm going to make integers for reasons that will become clear when I start adding rooms to a map. And I'll add one extra field, another string, called description. And that will contain a description of the room. So here's my room class. Now here you can see this is the constructor method. Uh, that's the method that's called when you want to create a new room object. And you can pass to it all the values, all these parameters up here, all the values that are need to, needed to initialize a new room. So that's a name, a description, and the values for the four exits. It's good object-oriented design to make variables, the, the fields of objects, private. And that's what I've done here. You can see with the integer variables, they've been marked as private. And then, of course, when I need to get at them, I need public accessor methods to get or set their values. And you can see a whole load of these down here to get and set the values of the exits. But wait a minute, I said a room has a name and a descri description, but there are no methods here to access those. Well, that's because room descends, or it extends, it descends from the thing class. And let's have a look at the thing class. So here's my thing class. Now, thing is the ancestor object of every other class in the game. So every uh, class inherits the name and the description that's defined in the thing class. And when the room constructor runs, when a room object is, a new room object is created, the first thing it does is it calls its ancestor the thing constructor method. That's in this line here. It calls the, uh, it uses a super and then it passes to it a name and a description. And that invokes the constructor of the super class or the ancestor class, which is the one we just looked at, the, the thing class. And it's the thing class then that actually initializes the name and the description variables. So really that's all I need to do to create a room class. And that will let me create room objects from it. But one room on its own isn't going to be any fun to explore. So in the next lesson, I'll show you how to make a map in which... Uh, many rooms can be linked together so that one room leads to another room and so on. Download the source code for these lessons from bitwisebooks.com. This Java series is based on the C-sharp programs that form the basis of the little book of adventure game programming available from Amazon.